We're walking around looking at the buildings and discovering the unique features of each one. When architects and designers design buildings, they have to think about things like repetition, symmetry, texture, and color. These things are part of what we call the language of design. Design is for people of all ages, so today we're going to teach all of you a little bit about buildings and how they are created. One of the first things architects think about when they are designing a building is its order and organization. Architects, interior designers, and landscape architects all work together to come up with unique ways to organize buildings on the inside and out. Buildings have what we call spatial qualities. This means that when you look at a building, it will have traits that cause it to be seen in a certain way. Some buildings may look heavy, while others seem lightweight. Some buildings are tall, and some are short. And some buildings are dark, while others are bright. The materials, patterns, structures, and other elements that designers use affect how space is made and used by the people in the building. Materials are used by architects, interior designers, and landscape architects to make a building special. More basic materials include brick, glass, concrete, and wood. Many of you probably live in a house or apartment that uses these materials. However, there are so many different materials that designers use that you may have never even seen or heard of. Stones like marble and quartz, ceramics, charred wood, and textiles are only a few of the other materials designers can work with. Choosing materials is a really important part of design because it affects the texture and color of the building, as well as how it is constructed. Fayetteville City Hall Administration Building is both vertical and horizontal. The verticality is more pronounced because of the alignment of the windows and the pilasters. Pilasters are columns that are engaged into the wall, so they do not stand alone. Um, the presence of the horizontal elements is less because the verticality is so pronounced. The repetition of elements is clear with the arcs on the top of the windows, the pilasters, the brick detailing that continues on each floor, and the cornice which is the top of the building. And the composition is top middle base um, that are clearly defined by the horizontal elements. We've spoken a little bit about the old Fayetteville post office. The main entry is a double door with a very large entry space. Um, it's kind of on a pedestal. And then if you rotate over to the side door is a single door with a very narrow entry space. And you can tell the definition between a main entry and a side entry. Now we have Theater Squared, which is, has a really good mix of materials. We've got glass, uh, some board form concrete, and then also some charred wood, which is that uh, black material you'll see up at the top, where they've actually taken wood boards and burned them to make it more resilient to the weather. And you can kind of see the way that the architects have designed the windows. They're vertical and they're very horizontal at the entrance to show you kind of where the entrance is. But also, they've created a balance in that you have that little black spot of material on the top left, which is really dark and heavy, but then it's surrounded by glass, which kind of balances out with the light material next to it. Something you may not be able to tell from the outside is that the materials actually are connected to what takes place on the inside. So the concrete areas are where the actual theater spaces are. Um, the glass spaces are more the public areas. And then the the black spot up on the top is where uh, the performers practice before they get started on their production. For this building, we have a very defined lower, middle, and upper part. On the bottom part, we have a stone material, and on the middle and upper parts, we have more of a brick material. You can also see that many of the elements, the square windows, are repeated uh, along the edge of the building, as well as some of the stone uh, decorations at the bottom. For this building, you can see the facade's very organized. We have um, some brick at the top, some brick details that are laid out in kind of a grid fashion. And then those same lines line up with the lines on the windows. And the line continues all the way down from the upper windows to the lower windows at the street level. This building uses a lot of interesting materials. We have some concrete blocks on the bottom for the base, 
as well as uh, some metal cladding that goes around the outside and around the top. But what makes this building really interesting is the way that the architect used hierarchy to kind of create balance. You can see the garage doors on the front are very large, but they're not as important as that front door over on the right because it has the bright yellow color. Um, it's got the, the windows that run straight up and down above it, kind of drawing your eye over there. So even though the, those doors are bigger at the front, your eyes are really looking at the front door and th the way you actually enter the house. These townhouses, the main difference that you can see is the stark contrast of red against the overall gray building. The repetition is very formal, it's the same form, the windows are in the same place in each building, and the pattern of the entry doors is on the right side of the building or on the left side of the building mirroring one another. Designers have the ability to control the way a person enters a building by creating what is called an entry sequence. For example, at this building, which used to be the Fayetteville Post Office, people veer off from the sidewalk and onto the paths leading into the doorway. The paths are lined by landscaping of flowers, bushes, and trees, which makes the journey inside enjoyable and surrounded by nature. Once people reach the top of the steps, they are greeted by two beautiful, large doors that lead them inside. The journey that people take to get inside is again called the entry sequence. When you're out and about in your hometown, I encourage you to pay attention about how you enter buildings and note how each entry sequence is different. This is the Fayetteville Town Center. To put this into scale, this is large enough to host public events. And if we go into the building in the plaza area, the bottom part is very heavy, just like the landscape, while the upper part is glass and open, and you can relate that to the sky above. You can also tell that there's a clear form of symmetry on each side of the building. So we're back in the School of Architecture and we're about to start making some drawings, or I should say collages, that look like some of the buildings we saw today earlier. So what you'll need to begin this process is some th simple things, some paper, maybe some construction paper, or if you have just some plain white paper around the house, magazines with lots of images, even old boxes from pasta or water or cereal. These all work really well to create shapes that we need in order to put together a building facade. Okay, so you guys, what have you got here? I got um, a lot of magazine clippings just from a stack of magazines that I had at home, and I focused on finding pieces that were colorful and lots of pattern on them, and then I'm going to make them have different textures. And Ooh, also, how did you do that? Just, I folded them like an accordion, um, just kind of at different, you can do different lengths, um, and then you just keep going, do that in strips, and then once you pull it apart, it makes a texture. Oh, that's great. So, yeah. That's great. How about you, Grant? Uh, sure. I've been focusing on just getting some cool shapes, uh, cutting out different shapes from magazines, like you said, different boxes and stuff, um, and really kind of focusing on the different colors that I had and kind of the, the visual texture of some of these uh, shapes that I had. Okay, so you've got triangles and rectangles. I see you've got ooh here. some circles. Yeah. So those just came from boxes. Mm -hmm. Those are nice. And then even some other just more abstract shapes that aren't necessarily a circle or a square. Any just any kind of shape. Mm -hmm. And arches, great. Yeah, yeah. All right, and what have you got? I have pieces of cardboard that I cut out to make just generic geometric shapes like triangles, uh, squares, and then I even have some like this that I got the square out of by cutting along this edge to get the triangle portion out of it. Okay, that's great. So yours is going to be more monochromatic, but with a very bright background. And you guys used quieter backgrounds, but you're going to have more colorful pieces. Every sturdy building needs a strong base to make sure that everything above ground will stay above ground and stay in the original shape that it was built in. So okay. the first thing I'm doing is making a strong base for my very vertical building that I'm about to construct. So kind of similar to Grace, uh, I'm going to work on creating a, 
organization that's kind of like a grid. It's very uh, organized. So I'm going to start by putting some big, some big uh, organizing lines here to kind of work off of moving forward. Okay, great. So that's going to be mostly horizontal. Now look at the way you guys are turning your paper. I think this is an interesting thing that you could focus on is if you want a vertical building, then maybe you take your piece of paper and you turn it vertically. But if you want it horizontal, then maybe you turn it horizontally. I like to sketch a lot, so I thought it would be kind of fun to try and incorporate some line work into this um, to give different parts of my facade more dimension. Okay, so sometimes you can find colored pencils around the house or markers. Um, I also brought some straws today. If you guys want to incorporate straws or popsicle sticks, they might make nice columns. So when I'm uh, trying to figure out what I'm gonna put on the paper here, I'm, I'm not gluing everything right away. I, I'm kind of setting things out so then I can see different ways that I can organize it. So that I, I'm starting here, but maybe later on I might move it around and try something else. So uh, giving myself the, the ability to change it later is, is good. So yeah, sometimes you get ideas in your head and you try to work on them. Sometimes you could even sketch them out beforehand. Or you might want to um, just play around with shapes and move them around the sheet and see what you come up with that you like. Sometimes design is a matter of searching for ideas by making things. And other times, you have an idea and you just try to make that exact idea. So in other words, for instance, could you come over here and say, hmm, let me move all of these over here, and then maybe I'll do something different on this side and balance it out. That's another way to think about things, because your paper is already asymmetrical. So you've got a lot of vertical lines there. What would happen if you started adding some thin horizontal lines? Mm, what, would, what would it turn into? Uh, it would definitely become more uh, grid-like because now we have these, if I put these guys right here, kind of have the vertical lines, but we also have the cross. So oh, yes. It's much more, more grid-like. I wonder if you can emphasize that even more. Mm, so like maybe taking some of these and putting them in the spaces in between. Right oh here. yeah, that looks good. Yeah. It's almost like two big columns. Mm -hmm. Wow, and you've got lots of color going on here. Yes. <laughs> and you're trying to make it very horizontal, I see. Yes, I'm trying to use the, the long strips that I cut out from the magazines and organize them in a way that um, makes it seem more horizontal. Mm -hmm. But I think you can also do that um, like the pieces don't necessarily have to be long, just the direction that you orient things can make something more horizontal or more vertical. So I think I'm gonna try and keep experimenting with that. Okay. You know, it's funny because these are starting to remind me of some of the buildings we saw when we were on our walkabout down at the town square. So we've talked about a lot of these design terms and these are things that anybody can use. They're very common words and when you start putting your drawings together, um, you are essentially becoming mini architects. So that's pretty cool. And you get to see how architecture students really work. See, they move things around, they make mistakes, they pull things off. How much glue do you put on there? Uh, not very much at all. Uh, I'm putting like just enough so that my paper will stay on the page. Okay. Yeah, I would think that uh, glue stick is probably the best to use because if you use Elmer's glue, sometimes it gets all, uh, or any kind of liquid glue, the paper starts to wrinkle. I always like to try to put things on students' desks to see what they do with them. What would she do with this, I wonder? Cry. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's, what, what could happen with that, I wonder? I wonder if the entry could be more important if that had some sort of big, tall piece over it, kind of like a building sign. We saw some of those. Or big archways over windows. We saw a lot of those. How about, we have these. I don't know what you like better. 
This represents some of the stuff that we saw downtown with the large openness above the entryway. Yes. So the light can come in. Right yes. Right. Yes. I think that's great. So you're, well, tell me what you're doing here. You're making a kind of fan piece. Yes. Um, I think this was a picture of a rug. <laughs> uh huh. Um, and I just decided to cut the tan from the black and it's going to kind of make a cool texture that I'm going to apply somehow. I don't really know yet. <laughs> okay. So when we talked about color and material, when we were looking at buildings, um, we saw a lot of um, different color contrasts. We said, wow, the dark red is so, um, seems much heavier next to the very light white. Or we looked at the way glass reflected um, the light and other surfaces like brick or wood start to absorb the light. So I think what you're doing there is cutting out and showing the difference between something that's light and something that's dark in color. So now we have a lot of lines going this way, but if I add this right here. Yeah, some bright numbers, color right on top. Line, making it much more. Yeah, here's another one. Maybe sure. you can try that. Yeah. Ooh, that looks very cool. Yeah, I like that. Very cool. All right. Now, you know you could decorate some of these pieces as well. So we see over here that Grace has all these nice squares. We might even put a circle inside a square. We talked about some of the decoration that we saw in the buildings downtown. And so anytime you can find little pieces that you can add decoration with, that would be fun too. We're going to make some lines every two inches on my piece of paper. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna start down at this end and every two inches, I'm going to make a little tick line and now, if I line up my ruler and grab a smaller marker, I can lay this out straight and draw lines all the way across. Okay, I'm just gonna do the top three. Now, let me draw some lines along this edge every two inches apart. This is a really quick and easy way, if you're having trouble cutting out straight shapes, this is a really easy way to do that. So now I'm gonna come down to the bottom again, and I'm gonna make every two inches, I'm going to start out here. There's a tick, a tick, a tick and tick. So now I'm going to draw these. You're probably wondering, well, why isn't she drawing them all? But I think what I'm gonna do is make a few squares and a few nice rectangles. Now, one thing you can do if you want circles is you could get a can or a glass or even a box that has a circle already cut out of it. I think I have one of those. And you could draw that too. So now look at this. I, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna steal your scissors here. Is that all right? Oh, it's perfect. Okay. <laughs> I just got some stuck to me. Okay, and now I'm gonna cut along the lines. Now if I cut these along the lines in this direction, Voila, I have a bunch of nearly perfect squares. All right, that looks really good. Now, I think you've got this looking very nice and tall and vertical. You know, everybody, the other thing you can do is if you want to make your building feel even taller, you could actually use another sheet of paper. Let's okay. see if I can, oh, you've got another, oh, there you go. Yeah, and now you could come up here and do things that are even, um, maybe help make it seem even more tall. Mm -hmm.
and kind of give it a top. Sure. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the cloud looks nice. <laughs> I think we could put some triangles here at the top to kind of finish it off. Yeah, that's great. Nice, yeah. So this is interesting what you're doing over here. You're adding some additional horizontal lines. So not everything has to be a collage. You can also draw on the paper itself to create more forms and more shapes. Um, I collage a lot, actually, and I think that by using um, a pen or paint or another material, you are, in fact, still collaging because it's still an application of different pieces and parts that come together to make the final product. So I hope everybody has enjoyed watching us create our own building facades, and I hope you're having fun making your own. Um, this only proves that anybody, no matter what age, can do design. And that's what this video has been all about. Um, I hope you enjoyed our tour of downtown. And let's turn these around so we can take a look at them. Hey, that looks great. It's symmetrical. Um, kind of, it's symmetrical in the middle. Yours is very tall and vertical, but it also has a grid. And this is very um, asymmetrical, but balanced. It almost looks like this is the very top of the building and then there's lots of decorations. Really nice. We hoped you liked learning about the different parts of buildings and how we as designers can make a building our own. Get creative when making your own buildings and always use your imagination. Be on the lookout for design in your hometown and observe the unique qualities that make up the language of design wherever you live.